welcome back to medinair in this video let's discuss about the second part of syphilis if you guys didn't watch the first part of syphilis i kindly do recommend you guys to watch that first the link will be in the description below and then continue watching this video okay let's begin with the part 2 of syphilis now let's move on to quaternary syphilis this stage develops in 5 to 15 years so this stage can be um, like majorly affects the nervous system and cardiovascular system so the nervous system affecting syphilis is called neurosyphilis and the cardiovascular system affecting syphilis is obviously cardiovascular syphilis the neurosyphilis can be of two types which are asymptomatic neurosyphilis and symptomatic neurosyphilis Asymptomatic neurosyphilis means in this condition the patient would not show any symptoms but if we test the CSF, the CSF will show um, biochemistry. In that biochemistry we would find tryponema pallidum in CSF but there is no neurological signs present that is called asymptomatic neurosyphilis. Whereas in symptomatic neurosyphilis, we could find symptoms like we could find neurological signs like meningeal syphilis, which occurs in one to two years, affects brain or spinal cord, and where we can have headache, nausea, vomiting, neck stiffness, cranial nerve palsy, and seizures. We can also find meningovascular syphilis, which occurs in five years, where we find inflammation of pia mater and arachnoid membrane with the involvement of arteries. The next sign is general paralysis of insane, which occurs in 5 to 15 years, where widespread degeneration of cerebral cortex with atrophy of that cerebral cortex occurs. We can find Ag argyle robertson pupil which is seen both in general paralysis of insane and tabus dorsalis which also a degeneration of sensory neurons dorsal columns and optic atrophy which is a, which is seen in quaternary syphilis along with this we can find cervical pachymeningitis which causes quadriplegia and earth's syphilitic spastic paraplegia and transverse myelitis these are the neurological signs, neurological manifestation when it has to present as symptomatic neurosyphilis. In the cardiovascular syphilis, it occurs 10 to 40 years after infection and we could find endarthritis obliterans of vasa vasorum of ascending iota and ascending iota's arch with medial necrosis and destruction of the elastic tissue. Along with this, we could able to see iotitis, iotic aneurysm, iotic regurgitation, coronary artery osteal stenosis. Now let's look at congenital syphilis. Congenital syphilis is a type of syphilis which present to the baby right from the birth and it has been given by the mother to the baby. So the lesion develop after four months of pregnancy. So if the treatment of mother before four months of pregnancy is done, this can prevent the fetal damage. But late onset of pathology in fetal fetus leads to stillbirth rather than abortion. So the manifestations are as follows. So we can remember it like a 6S, okay, where the 6S stands for syphilitic snuffles, syphilitic pemphigus, syphilitic ragedus, syphilitic wig, syphilitic pseudoparalysis, and sabre tibia. Yeah, and that's a lot. Uh, but I'll explain each term. Syphilitic snuffles mean blood-stained purulent nasal discharge. Syphilitic pemphigus means papules in vesicle with bullae. Like pemphigus, we, we usually find the characteristic feature of pemphigus. It's a bullae. Syphilitic rashidus means mucus patches with radiating fissures over the angle of the mouth. Okay, it is present in the angle of the mouth. Syphilitic wig, the term, you, you know, wig is a growth of black hair. And uh, syphilitic pseudoparalysis means swollen, painful end of long bones with periostitis leading to restricted movements. So uh, the patient can do only some restricted movements. 
and sabre tibia means thickened deformed tibial bone due to subperiosteal bone formation so all these six s's should be remembered along with we have certain features like anemia thrombocytopenia hepatomegaly enlargement of liver splenomegaly enlargement of spleen lymphadenopathy jaundice and nephrotic syndrome so these features are features of early congenital congenital syphilis which occurs in the first two years of birth along with these we have some certain specific uh, oral manifestations which are a uh, hutchinson's incisor mulberry molars mulberry molar means uh, it it looks like mulberry so mulberry molars high arched palate frontal bossing saddle shaped nose bulldog jaw mucosal patches and cranial neuropathy so other manifestations would look like this but the late congenital syphilis would occur in children at 2 years of age or greater than this so it presents with keratitis choroiditis and retinitis in eyes and we can also find bilateral nerve deafness and clutton's joint which is a recurrent arthropathy with painless effusion in knees so it affect knees and cardiovascular and neurosyphilis which are general para paralysis of insane we have read it already so it can also present with late congenital syphilis along with this we could find an exclusive feature here which is called hutchinson's triad in hutchinson's triad we could find hutchinson's teeth which is present in early congenital syphilis right so along with that interstitial keratitis and a uh, eighth nerve deafness are seen so these are the features of early and late congenital syphilis so now let's look at the laboratory investigation of syphilis so the trypanema pallidum cannot be seen on hne staining so we need dark field microscopy or phase contrast microscopy to see that pathogen and uh, we also have some um, non specific or lipoidal antigen test called venereal disease research laboratory test which is uh, important and a rapid plasma reagent test and we also have some specific trypanosomal antigen test called trypanosoma pallidum heme agglutination assay fluorescent trypanosomal antibody absorbed test and trypanosoma pallidum immobilization test trypanosoma enzyme delinked immunosorbent assay test which is elisa test and also direct fluoresc I mean direct fluorescent antibody trypanosoma pallidum test we can also do biopsy where we can demonstrate trypanosoma pallidum in tissues from biopsy specimens and uh, we can perform chest x-ray where we can find calcification of ascending aorta and aneurysms uh, the cerebrospinal fluid examination can also be performed where it is positive after 4 weeks of infection early treatment may prevent the serological positivity but false positive serological tests can also be seen in case of rheumatoid disorders malaria leprosy and so on uh the detailed explanation of each uh, test can also be made as a different video if you guys want to know about it please do let me know now let's look at the management part of syphilis so each stages is managed in different ways but the main idea of uh, treatment is giving antibiotics and that to penicillin group of antibiotics uh, so that we start with the to we start treating the primary stage with procaine penicillin or benzathion penicillin g the dosage and the duration of each drugs for each stages is given compiled in this tabla column for your easy understanding so you can write it and stick it on your wall or stick it wherever you, you know see it often and you can revise it on a daily basis so you could get a clear picture of this tabla column whenever you write it on your exam or whenever you prescribe drugs to your patients it will be very helpful so that's about today's video 
i hope you guys found this helpful um, if you read then please do consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel and i'll see you guys in my next video take care